With FreeBSD interest on the rise, here at the Foundation, we've been looking at different ways you can try out FreeBSD in under five minutes. Linked in the description below is a blog post where we test three different ways to install FreeBSD in minutes and sometimes even seconds. In our first video, which you can see by clicking up here, we looked at using a virtual machine image in QMU on an Apple MacBook. In this video, let's take a look at testing it on Amazon Web Services. Naturally, you're going to need an AWS account, but we're not going to use this GUI interface because we all know that text is the secret way to scale technology, don't we? So let's use the common infrastructure as code tool, Terraform. We could use the GUI, but when you first log on, you're greeted with this. And in the EC2 console itself, if you want to launch a new instance, it's not actually that easy to find things. So you have basic suggestions here, but that's not what we want because we want FreeBSD. So which one of these do you pick? Uh, I know it's the marketplace, but would you know it was the marketplace? So then I have to go and find it under FreeBSD, then I find it, and then there's a load more steps to do. We can make this a lot easier. So along with that other prerequisite of having an AWS account, uh, we're also going to need Terraform. I'm working on a Mac here, so I'm just going to install it via Homebrew. It's a nice, simple way to install things. You're also going to want your AWS credentials. Now, in the GitHub repository linked below, in the README, there's a link off to further documentation for Terraform and how to choose different methods of setting up your AWS credentials. I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. Now we've got Terraform set up, we've actually done the hard prep for you and made the Terraform configuration. So by default, this is going to use EU West 2, which is London. You're going to want to change that. But this will work out what the correct AMI is to use in the region. So really, all you need to do is decide whether the default size settings are OK. You need to set your SSH key, which you can find in your AWS console and then run this under Terraform. So you can run a Terraform plan, which will show you what's going to happen. And then we can run Terraform apply and it will actually action it. So if we just go and take a quick look at our AWS console before we start this off, you'll see that there is no instance already existing. And as we kick this off, it will go and create an instance for us. And the Terraform configuration also outputs what are public DNS is, so we can just SSH straight to it. In the same way as with our QMU video, we have a virtual machine running now, but uh, it's the basic operating system with no other things installed on it. So the same Ansible play that we use there, we can use here too. If we check our access first of all, the nice thing is about the AWS install, we already have a user on there rather than just root, so it's called EC2 user. And we also have things like Python installed. I'm going to use the same little shortcut script that uh, we used in the QMU video. And this is just going to install a few useful tools that help with our day-to-day -day usage of the system. There we go, all configured with our helpful tools. I've got a small helper here as well that just simply outputs the host name so that I can SSH straight into it quite easily. And you'll notice that this basically looks a lot like the QEMU install. After pointing out how busy and possibly confusing the AWS interface is, AWS LightSail is a different kettle of fish. You can actually get a FreeBSD instance up and running in about 20 seconds with very, very few clicks. If we just go create instance, it's under Linux slash Unix, which is good. Uh, we pick operating system only, FreeBSD 14.2, uh, leave our default SSH key, don't really need to touch anything else unless you want IPv6 only. And a very small instance, $5 a month, will come up pretty fast. Okay, so that's up and running. That was about 30 seconds from start to finish. 
And as you could see in real time, clicking through the interface was probably about 10 seconds. So in less than a minute, you can have a usable FreeBSD instance up and running on LightSail. These instances are UFS root only for the file system. And a lot of the things that we're going to do in the future series are going to be based around ZFS root. If you just wanted to get a very simple web server up and running, maybe for a small business or personal website, this is actually a pretty good, very cheap, very fast option and you have a full operating system rather than just some sort of web GUI instance. Maybe there's an idea for a future video. Would you like to see us take one of these small VMs from nothing to a working website with possibly an easy to maintain static site generator and some sort of common templating system? Might be a nice alternative to using one of the GUI website builders. Let us know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see us do. So there we go. Quick and easy installs on Amazon AWS EC2 and on LightSail. In either case, you're up and running in about 20 or 30 seconds, which is pretty impressive, really. The same caveat applies as with our previous video installing FreeBSD 14.2 under QMU, in that this is the base operating system and you're probably going to want to do far more with it. We have some follow up content coming uh, covering some of those ideas, but if there are specific things that you would like to see us do with FreeBSD as the base, please leave your suggestion in the comments below and we'll see if we can get to it. In the meantime, if you would like to see some videos uh, from the rest of this series, you can click here. And if you'd like to see the previous video where we install it on QEMU under, um, on a Mac, you can click up here. Anyway, bye for now.